In this video, I want to explore the effects panel that contains grain and post-crop fig netting. So if we go up to our panel options, you'll see a little FX icon. If we click on that, you'll notice this is the effects panel which contains grain and post-crop fig netting. Now let's just take a look at grain to start off with. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to zoom in my image to 100%, which I recommend you do um, primarily because it's going to give you the best sort of um, visual uh, visualization of what you're actually creating with the grain itself. Now, grain simulates film grain essentially, and it's very useful for masking or hiding digital artifacts that occur when making larger prints and actually interpolating your files up to relatively large sizes. So as you can see here, as I grab the amount slider, it controls the amount of grain that's being applied to my image. So the higher the value goes, the more grain that is being applied. And as you see, if I preview, you'll notice it's quite a dramatic effect. Now, underneath grain, we have size and roughness. Now, these both determine the character of grain. Now, the size slider itself controls the grain particle size. So as we start off at a low value on the left-hand side, you'll notice that it is quite fine and quite detailed. But as you increase it and head across to the right-hand side of the slider, it becomes quite large and it starts to actually look a little bit blurred, as you can as you can see. So that actually controls the particle size. So you want to have a play around with that as to what size of grain you actually want to apply to your image. Now underneath size, you have roughness, which controls the regularity of the grain. So for example, if I drag the slider to the left hand side, the grain becomes more uniformed. But if I slide the slider across to the right hand side, it actually becomes uneven. Now as with film itself, it's not perfectly uniform, so it's sort of probably halfway in between uniform and uneven, but you just need to play around with that to get the character of film grain that you're sort of looking for to apply to your image. Now when doing this, you want to make sure that you actually view your image at several different uh, magnifications or zoom levels just to see how it actually looks. Um, because sometimes it may look great at 100%, but it looks bloody awful at, say, 50% or 33% when you actually jump back. And this is especially important because if it really looks quite unsightly, then your prints are going to turn out quite awful, to be honest, um, because the grain is going to be distracting from the actual uh, image itself. So you just want to take note of that and make sure you look at it a couple different sizes prior to actually going and actually printing those images out just to make sure you've got your desired result. Now along with grain we have post crop V netting. Now this is a new feature to Camera Raw which was introduced primarily because of some of the limitations that we have with lens VIG netting in the lens correction panel. Now in the previous video we took a look at how to actually use that so let's just jump back into that panel for a second and we'll just go over some of the limitations here and then I can go into why post crop V netting is actually better in some respects. Now what I showed you previously was how to apply lens fig netting to your image to sort of focus the attention of the viewer on the center of your image by darkening off some of the uh, corners of your image as you can see here. So if we do a little before and after preview, you'll notice that the corners have darkened off, but the center is sort of still around the same density. Now, one of the limitations with lens VIG netting is that it applies it to the entire image. So for example, I happen to think that this image looks fantastic as a panoramic in a three to one ratio. So if I was to crop this in that format, you'll notice that the lens view netting is still being applied to the entire image, although I have actually cropped the image. So the actual adjustments are still being applied to the outside areas that are actually being cropped, which is, is not very good when it comes to adjusting or, or when it comes to trying to reproduce this type of effect on a cropped image. 
So the way to get around this is to actually use the post crop VIG netting in the effects panel. Let's just um, hit enter on that crop for a minute and we'll just zero off the lens VIG netting here and we'll jump back into the effects panel. And what you'll notice is when I start to actually add the amount or actually minus the amount value, as you can see there, it's actually adding it to the outside of the image, which it was not doing to, uh, it was actually adding it to the areas that were cropped in the previous adjustment, whereas this is actually adding it to the actual inside areas that have actually been cropped in the image. So that's the primary difference between using lens correction, uh, using the lens VIG netting uh, setting in the lens correction panel and using the post crop VIG netting. Although post crop VIG netting does have a lot more uh, options available to you and adjustments that you can utilize. So let's take a look at those. First you have a styles drop down menu which gives you the option of choosing from a highlight priority, color priority and paint overlay. Now highlight priority essentially uh, protects the highlight contrast uh, and, and stops that from blowing out when you're actually making these adjustments. Uh, one of the drawbacks of using that is you'll sort of tend to see a color shift uh, by using it. Now color priority actually preserves the color hues so there's no sort of color shift when you're actually making your adjustments although it does tend to lose some detail in the highlights when you're actually using it. Now paint overlay is um, just very similar to using almost like a, a a um, gradient layer in Photoshop for example where it actually just blends with the original colors of the image using black or white where it applies those black and whites on top of the actual image itself so it doesn't have that um, sort of effect that the highlight or color priority actually have as you can see and it does look sort of a lot um, more subdued it's a softer effect as you can see now, along with the styles drop down menu, you have the amount, which obviously uh, controls the amount of the netting to being applied to your image. As you can see there, you can either go dark or you can lighten it off according, accordingly, I should say. Now, with the midpoint adjustment, it actually restricts the adjusted areas. So at the moment, it's dead center and it's, it's applying it evenly across the entire image. But if you were to actually change the value of that, you can see that the actual VIG netting amount is actually getting less and it's getting more focused on the center of the image. And if you go across to the right hand side, you can see that it's expanding the area of the actual unaffected area, I should say, of the image as you move further across to the right hand side. So that is um, something that you can really play around with to get some interesting effects. Now the roundness slider actually um, controls the the actual shape of the feed netting. So for example, if we increase the roundness value, you'll notice that the actual feed netting becomes quite circular. But if we were to minus the values, and it actually becomes more oval like which is actually quite nice for this particular panorama. Now feathering allows you to adjust the softness of surrounding pixels around the actual uh, affected areas of the V netting itself. So if I increase the pixel um, or increase the value of the feather amount I should say you'll notice that it's feathered right off but if I go in the opposite direction you can see that the actual V netting becomes quite harsh and uh, almost a accurate line right around that VIG netting. So you really want to make sure that you have a nice uh, feathered amount in here so that it doesn't look really obvious that you've made that um, VIG netting adjustment to your image because it can look quite disturbing if you do have that obvious outline around your image. Now the highlight slider only works when you have the style set to highlight or color priority and your amount must be a negative value. Now this slider essentially controls the degree of highlight punch in the brighter areas of your image. As you can see when I actually increase it you'll notice the highlight areas are becoming quite quite punchy 
uh, and that is essentially around the actual VEG netting that's occurring. So it's you'll see it up in the top right hand corner here in the clouds as I increase the value so does those highlight areas that have actually had the V netting applied to them they have actually increased the brightness level of those values and if I drop it back you'll notice those values drop back again so that's quite useful for if you're losing a bit of that uh, contrast or detail in those affected areas if you want to sort of bring them out a bit more, you could utilize the highlight slider to do that.